Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. Um, this episode is going to be a quick review of the performance of some of the ideas that I shared in early 2021. So we've had about two years now on most of these. Um, I put most of these out in January and February of 2021. And what I tried to do was each week I would give a sell idea or suggestion, a buy suggestion, and an avoid suggestion. Um, the ones that I suggested were buys were all stocks that I actually bought. The, the sells, which is the page that's up here right now, um, those were all quality businesses that I would consider owning but they were massively overvalued. Um, and I tried to show all that in the videos. And so they were overvalued enough to sell was the uh, idea behind it. Um, the avoids were a little bit different. That, those were typically where th there's something about the stock or the business that posed kind of a danger that didn't show up in like a basic valuation. Um, and so I talk about those in the, in the videos as well. Usually they work a little bit differently in that a lot of times everything kind of goes as planned until it doesn't. And then they kind of, uh, really roll over and fail. So that's usually what happens. Sometimes it can be a slower decline, especially if it's a revenue based avoidance. Um, so those are kind of the three categories that I put out and I tried to, uh, kind of pair them or triple them um, up together when I released them each week. So if I could get similar companies like I, like Disney compared to Comcast, right? That was one of them. Um, though where I thought one was a buy and one was a sell in a similar industry, if I could get the industries together that way, um, I try to do that as well. So let's... Um, Let's just take a look and see how they did. I didn't add all the dividends back in for all these, but th these are just gonna be, the moves are so huge, you'll get the general idea um, from the, the stock price. I think at one point, maybe last year, I did add some dividends in, but um, I have the dates over here if you wanna see more precise numbers, but these are basically correct. Um, and I set these spreadsheets up a couple years ago just to track and see how these did. So we're gonna start with the sell suggestion. So these are going to be good businesses that were really overvalued. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and what we see here is I set this up so it would compare them to the S&P 500 um, on the same day. So the S&P 500 on average, and then this is the average of all of them, it has returned about five and a half percent since I posted these videos on average, and you can see the individual ones here. This group of stocks has produced almost a minus 20% loss. So we'll call it 19. And Apple's about flat, but underperformed. Estee Lauder's performed about the same as the S&P 500. So there really isn't anything that was wrong. I mean, you do, you wouldn't have gone wrong even on Estee Lauder if you just bought S&P 500. So you would have been about the same. So I think overall, I mean, this is pretty much 100%. You would have avoided a 70% loss in PayPal, um, a nearly 50% loss in Disney. Um, and I still think Apple has a ways to fall. They report earnings pretty soon. I think this is going to be a tough year for them. So I would expect them to come down. I think the reopening from the pandemic probably helped Estee Lauder a little bit. There was a point in time where they were down quite a bit too, but generally speaking, you know, you would have performed a lot better just buying the index than continuing to hold these stocks that I thought were sells. Um, even, even a lot of times people will complain about their tax bill if they sell um, when something's overvalued, but you can see you saved yourself 20% here. Um, that's enough to pay at least in the United States, for pretty much any capital gains tax, even if it was the entire amount, which it never is. Um, okay, so let's go to 
to buy suggestions next. So now at the time I published this, I owned all these. Um, there has been quite a, have been quite a few changes since then, but we can see overall this group is up 44% compared to the SP 500's 5%. Um, PBCT got bought out like just a couple weeks after I posted that video. I think Carl Icahn um, bought them. So this price, these prices are frozen here in time from the announcement of that, and I sold the stock as soon as the announcement came out. So. It made like 24% in like a couple weeks or something like that. Um, I might put the date in over here. Yeah, 2.22. So yeah, really two weeks, almost less than two weeks. Uh, I, I did buy this one before I made the video, so I owned it slight, I owned it like a month before that, but very good returns there. So we had a couple, and then of course the energy, the refiners were a big hit. I'll tell you what I still own. So I've taken profits in principle taking profits in Allstate, taking profits in Valero, taking profits in Sinclair. Um, I still own Elevant, which was at the time, if you go look at the video, the the videos, it was, um, it had a different, it had a different name. Um, and I'll have to try, I forget it every single time for some reason. Um, but if you go try to find the video, it's, it, they changed their name. Um, Let's see, so yeah, so I still own that. I still own Meta and I still own Comcast. So um, Meta has obviously suffered quite a bit, um, although it's starting to come back a little bit now. I would say I, I really underestimated the advertising, um, the damage that was gonna be done to advertising stocks. I knew advertising would be cyclical in a downturn. <clears throat> we haven't totally seen it yet. We might this reporting period. Um, but I underestimated it overall. I mean, I have other stocks in my portfolio. Comcast is the same way. Um, they have advertising exposure as well. Um, and I would say that they all got hurt worse than I would have expected as soon, sooner than I would have expected. Now Meta has its own issues with the metaverse and changing from Facebook and all that stuff too. But, um, I think the ads definitely played a role. So I'm still holding that one. And Comcast, it's important to point out, I think, which has also really suffered um, the past few years, mostly because I think the market fears that um, cord cutting and cable television is on the decline. Generally, I th it's definitely a risk. Um, I think Comcast has ways that they can, uh, other ways they can make money. So I'm kind of betting that they can transition a little bit better. But if you compare them to Disney, which is what I was telling people to avoid on the same, we I think the same video actually, I think I talked about them in the same video. Um, you know, they're down twice as much. So even though Comcast is down, it's not down nearly as much as um, Disney. But overall, you can see you have a very good return. I mean, that's 20% a year, you know? and uh which is kind of the range that i like to aim for and this gen usually i miss about one and five and we were pretty close to that what do we have eight here and we missed two that's this is pretty standard and if you go to even here if we just cut cut it off after two years we had a couple that were just kind of flat basically i mean under apple underperformed a little bit but um again the same kind of ratios holding here in terms of that's why you want to have a decent enough sample size. You know, if you put all your money in Meta, um, you wouldn't have done very good. Um, or if you only took money out of Estee Lauder or something like that, you wouldn't have done as well. So it really, you have to, you want to, I spread my bets around. I usually take 1% positions in most things. I took a double in Valero. I took a double in Sinclair, but that means it's 2%, which is pretty low compared to most people. So we have, a, you could either have made 44% or lost 19, so I'll take that spread. Now getting into the avoids, um, this we kind of see why the avoids have their own category, right? So when something goes wrong, like with Carnival, it really goes wrong big with Carnival and Tesla. And you can see they just fall off a cliff. And so the ultimate, relative returns, well, the 
regular returns are negative or almost flat. And then relative, it didn't per as a whole, these didn't perform as well as the market. That's because these two did so poorly. Um, as time goes on, th that's basically the risk we're trying to avoid with these. They can they can do really well until they don't basically. Um, and so that's what I was trying to um, point out. I would say I think Wells Fargo was down today because. They reported earnings, so we'll have to see what happens there. But they they have a, like a lot of transitioning still going on, um, and I would expect Franklin. If the market's down, this should be way down too. A lot of these, I think, dividend investors are still hanging in there, but um, they're definitely risky still. Um, and I think avoiding them would have been general. You wouldn't have missed out on anything if you just kept your money in the index. So. Overall, I mean, I can't really um, complain. I think I did a pretty good job on the videos. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to make more videos on a regular basis this year and keep going. But there, I like to have a little bit of evidence. Last week I made a video about um, time frames and how it usually takes a couple years. So here we have about that two-year time frame. Two to three years is usually when things start to kind of show their true colors. Um, if it doesn't happen sooner and then if I get to three years and nothing kind of crazy like a pandemic has happened um, that's when I can look and say okay I got that one wrong I missed that one um, but they can fluctuate a whole lot in between um, at one point Apple you know was much higher Tesla was much higher than when I said to sell it or at least significantly higher um, but you can see that downside danger eventually kind of played itself out so and like I said, I've taken profits in all these except for Elevance, Meta, and Comcast. All right, and next week I'll try to come up with, uh, maybe we'll do some individual stock analysis next week. Or I think what I'm going to do is use this channel more for my wider market um, talks. And then use my articles as more of a specific stock thing. But I might mix it, I might mix it up a little bit. Um, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I should be putting out more content um, this year. All right. Bye-bye.